Hi, boys and girls. It's me, good old Mr. Sanito, and I've got another book for you for today. Today's book is by an author we have heard from before, Jan Brett, and the title of today's book is Daisy Comes Home. And the setting for this book is not in America, it's in China. So I thought we would use Google Earth and try and find China in Google Earth. Are you ready? Let's take a look at Google Earth. So let's take a look at uh, Google Earth and let's start by finding Hate Elementary School. And let me see if this works. I'm gonna try it this way and pretend you are flying over the sky. And here we are zooming right in and we are just flying around hate school. Now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. Oh, now look at this. Do you guys remember this? Hold on. We're just going to zoom around here a little bit. Do you see the playground? I can even see the windows to our classroom. I can see where we line up for breakfast and we go outside at the end of the day. But today's story, Daisy Comes Home, doesn't happen at hate school. It happens in another country called China. So I'm going to try and find China in Google Earth. So let's see if I can do this. This is like my third time doing this today. But I think I got it. Uh, nope, I don't have it. Let me try this again. China. Bam, bam. Whoa, look at that. We are zooming out of Chicago, zooming out, spinning around the globe into Asia. And there, on the map, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. This is where you would find China. And that is the country where today's story takes place. Today's story is called Daisy Comes Home. So let's get to that. Daisy Comes Home, written and illustrated by Jan Brett. Now, Daisy is one of the hens. She is an important character in the story. The girl you see on the cover, her name is Mei Mei. She takes care of the hens. Boys and girls, how do you think Mei Mei feels about her hens? Take a look at the illustration. How do you think she feels about her hens? How can you tell? Are there any clues there? Hmm. Now, as I said, Jan Brett is the author and the illustrator of this story. And you might remember that in Jan Brett's books, we've read some of them before, she adds a little something extra on the side of the pages. In fact, she even does it on the cover. She's got some nice flowers on the sides. So you can look for that as we read. Um, also, let's find out about Mei Mei and Daisy. Let's just get right to it. Daisy comes home. Look over the garden wall and you will see the six happiest hens in China. They live in Mei Mei's sandy yard by the Li River, where they lay brown eggs every day for Mei Mei to sell at the market. But it was not always this way. And you can see up here and here the brown eggs. I wonder if I see six hens. Do you see six hens, boys and girls? Can you find all six? Yep. I found them. Oh, 
Once upon a time, the smallest hen, the one Meme calls Daisy, was picked on by all the others. This is hard to imagine because Meme was known far and wide for her happy hens. She gave them treats. She put fresh hay in their nests. She gave them baths when they fell in black mud. And when she called, goo goo, goo goo, all the hens would run to her as fast as their legs could carry them. Even Maymay's egg baskets were painted with big red characters that read happy hens. And she tried to make it so. Do you see the basket? with the red characters on it. Mm. Do you notice anything else in the picture, boys and girls? Mm. Look carefully. But every night, when it was time to roost in the hen house, the other hens picked on Daisy. They fluffed, up, they fluffed up their feathers and crowded her off the perch. So this is the perch where the hens walk. And look, look what they did to poor Daisy. They jostled her. That means they shoved her until peck, one or the other pushed her and thump, off she fell. Then the hens tucked their heads into their feathers and went to sleep while poor little Daisy was stuck below on the damp mud floor, shivering and cold until morning. Boys and girls, look in the picture. Can you find May May sleeping? Can you find a hen who is sleeping? Mm-hmm. One day, it rained all day, and the hens stayed inside. When it got dark, they flew up to their perch, except for Daisy. She had had enough of pushy hens and cold, damp floors. She went outside to find a place to spend the night. Down on the riverbank, she spied one of the market baskets. She snuggled in and fluffed up her feathers to stay warm. Daisy was sleeping and didn't see the river creeping up the bank from all the rain. So the river, boys and girls, was rising. It was a flood. And when the water reached her happy hen's basket, she didn't feel it float out onto the river. But you can see it. But when the basket started tipping and bobbing, Daisy woke up. She peeked out and saw a watery world all around her. The sandy yard, the garden wall, and Maymay's farmhouse looked smaller and smaller as the current carried her down the river. Uh-oh. Finally, the basket bumped against a stone jetty where a houseboat was tied up. Scratch, scratch, scraped the basket as the river waves pushed it against the sharp rocks. A dog was sitting on the deck of the houseboat. So here's the houseboat. Of course, there's the dog on the deck the edge. When he saw the plump hen bobbing in the basket, he barked and scrambled toward her. Daisy squawked and packed and beat the air with her wings. It was enough to tip the basket off the rocks, and she floated away just in time. Oh no. I wonder what else will happen to Daisy, boys and girls. Dawn broke over the gooey mountains. That means the sun came up as the basket drifted along the river. 
branches brushed against it, fish swam silently by, and birds flew overhead. Suddenly, Daisy felt a thump. Don't forget to look at these pictures. I think we're getting a little bit of bonus story here. Hmm, what do you see? Daisy looked up and saw two big horns and a pair of surprised eyes looking down at her. The basket had drifted into the legs of a great big water buffalo taking a morning drink. The buffalo snorted loudly, scaring Daisy. She flew forward and nipped his furry muzzle and flapped and flapped her wings. Daisy scared the water buffalo. He turned and galloped up the bank, scattering the ducks as he ran. His splashes made waves that carried the basket back into the middle of the river. Boys and girls, what do you notice about the color around the smaller pictures on the pages? Do you see that they're red? Hmm. What information are you getting from these pictures? Hmm. Think about it. Daisy traveled along all day until her basket was hooked by the roots of a banyan tree where a troop of red-tailed monkeys lived. The curious monkeys eyed Daisy and climbed down for a closer look. Daisy froze as one monkey crept up to the basket and reached in. Daisy flapped and pecked, nipped and squawked. The startled monkey pushed the basket away. It broke loose from the tree and floated on down the river. Oh, Daisy wondered what would happen next. Do you notice Mei Mei up here? How does she look? And I think we're getting a clue about what will happen next in this picture. Up ahead, Daisy saw a fisherman with cormorants diving all around his bamboo boat. They were catching fish and taking them to him for a reward. The fisherman felt a soft bump behind him. Thinking it was a cormorant, he reached back and grabbed. How surprised he was to see that he was holding a hen instead of a cormorant. Those are the cormorants. Those are the birds. Finders keepers, he exclaimed. Little fish, big fish, silver fish, white fish. That's what I sell at the market, but today I will have this tender young chicken. He put a net over the basket and headed to shore with poor Daisy inside. At home, Mei Mei had looked all day and all night for her little Daisy. She wasn't in the hen house. She wasn't behind the farmhouse. She couldn't fly over the wall. Where is she, Mei Mei wondered, worried all the time about what had happened to Daisy. Finally, she knew that she had to go to the market. With a sad feeling, she packed her eggs in their baskets and started on her way. As the baskets swung back and forth, the red characters on the sides of her baskets made Mei Mei feel sadder and sadder. Happy hens, she said aloud to herself. What about my daisy? Where can she be? Hmm. Boys and girls, how do you think May May feels right now?
at the market, May May found a place and arranged the eggs in clean, sweet-smelling straw. All morning, shoppers bought her fresh brown eggs, but she couldn't stop thinking about her little lost hen. May May heard a voice calling her. It was her friend, Zhang, yelling from the back of a bike cart. A fisherman has a happy hen's basket, he shouted. What? she called, not understanding what he was saying. A happy hen's basket, he repeated. You'd better hurry because he's showing off what's inside. Daisy, Maymay shouted. Look carefully, boys and girls, to find Daisy. Can you see her in the illustrations? Well, what do you think is going to happen next? May May raced to where the fish were sold. There was Daisy, beautiful and plump in her basket, surrounded by a crowd, all wanting to buy her. That's my hen, she cried to the fisherman. But his face was like stone. Now think about that, boys and girls. Does stone move? No. His face did not move. He was not showing any emotion. He was not showing any feelings. May May pointed to the red characters on the basket. Happy hens, she said. The fisherman crossed his arms. Finders keepers, he growled, and turned away to sell Daisy. May May was about to leave, but her eyes rested on those characters. Happy hens. All she could think about was Daisy in a cooking pot. Oh, boys and girls, she must be worried about someone cooking Daisy. She squeezed her eyes shut and clenched her fists. That she had to do something. Goo goo, goo goo, goo goo, goo, she called at the top of her voice. And when Daisy heard that call, she answered it the way she had every day of her life. She rose up and threw herself against the basket, tipping it over. She ran toward her friend May May as fast as her legs could go. Daisy flew onto May May's shoulder, and off they went, running back to get May May's basket and go home. Look at them running. The fisherman ran after them, furious. Stop, he yelled at Maymay. That's my hen. Finders keepers, Maymay called over her shoulder. And with Daisy clinging to her, she ran and didn't stop until they were safely home. That night, as the sun went down, Daisy took a place on the roost. When one of the big hens fluffed up her wings and spread out, expecting Daisy to fall off the perch like always, Daisy flapped her wings. I learned that from a boat dog, she clucked. Another hen tried to tip her off. She pushed right back. I scared a water buffalo like that, she squawked. Another hen jostled her. Peck, peck. Peck, peck. Daisy kept her place on the perch and beat the air with her wings. She remembered the monkey and she pecked and flapped all over again. That was when the hens gave Daisy a place of her own. Boys and girls, Daisy changed. She's not the same scared hen. Hmm. What does she do now that is different from before? How did Daisy change? Hmm.
The lap, lap, lap of the river made a peaceful nighttime song. No bumping, no jostling, no fussing around. Just six happy hens, their heads tucked in their feathers, high and warm and safe together. I hope you enjoyed that. Why don't you get your writer's notebook, a pencil and some crayons, and let's get ready to do a little bit of writing. I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, I hope you have your materials out. And just like always, let's start by writing the title of the book, Daisy Comes Home. And because we are pretty much ready for second grade, we are going to write our first and last name at the top of our page. Do it with your best handwriting. And I'm going to give you a question to write about, and then I'm going to help you out a little bit. So here's the question that I want you to think about and to write about today. It says, Daisy changed from the beginning of the story to the end. Remember how Daisy was at the beginning of the story? I don't want to tell you because then I'd be giving you the answer, but think about it. Now, here it is. What does Daisy do that shows she is different from before? What does Daisy do at the end? end of the story, boys and girls, to show she's a little bit different. Now, I'm going to give you some help here. Um, I'm going to give you some sentence starters. So the first one, let me see if I can do this. Nope, maybe this. Okay, here's the first sentence starter. You could start your sentence like this. In the beginning, Daisy blank. And what I want you to fill in the blank with, think about this. How did Daisy act in the beginning of the story? What was she doing? Remember when the other hens were mean to her? Mm, think about that. You can rewatch the video if you want to. Now, there's one more part. It goes like this. How about this? There we go. <laughs> it's been a long day, boys and girls. Anyway, here's the second part of the sentence. It says, but at the end, at the end of the story, Daisy blank. How did Daisy act at the end of the story? And that's what I want you to write about. She was a little bit different. If you need to go back and watch the video, you could do that. And then you can take your crayons and you can add a little picture. And I started to add a little picture to mine. I started to draw Daisy. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of for fun. I need to go back in and finish coloring her. Maybe I'll pick um, something like this. But you go ahead and do your writing and then you can do your drawing of Daisy or maybe you want to draw May May. Go ahead and take a picture, send it to me in Class Dojo. Have a great day, boys and girls, and I'll talk to you soon.